You made your mind up who you're going to vote for? Who? Yes, Jacinda Ardern. And why is that? Um, because I think that we need a female kind of taking the reins after Helen Clark kind of left without a successor. This is our fourth episode now. A few days ago we started by driving through Kaitaia, Kaikohe and Whangarei. We stopped in Walkworth and Orewa. But this is Auckland. This is a completely different beast. This is where a third of New Zealand's population lives. We could spend two weeks here and barely begin to scratch the surface of what's going on. Housing, infrastructure, transport, health, mental health. What we are going to do is visit a couple of markets. I'm here at Parnell at the Saturday market and later on this morning we're going to go to Otara for their market. At least in terms of the public's perception, there's a big difference in these two suburbs in terms of affluence and diversity. But we're going to go back to the whole point of doing this series, which is to ask people the very simple question, what election issues do you care about? Uh, the economy, uh, health, education, the usual, but um, I guess the economy is a big one as a small business owner, um, but also um, inequality and making sure that the uh, people with uh, who have it hardest in our society are, are being looked after. I'm really interested in the environment, so I think something targeting like particularly the rivers and lakes would be really important for me. I reckon social housing and that sort of thing. I mean, I haven't, I've lived in Auckland now for like three years, just over, coming up three years, and you definitely notice way more homeless people than when just three years ago. Rent is quite high, just to like afford to stay in the Auckland area especially if you're going to university and stuff like that. It is, it is transportation, like um, I also own a small business and, um, and help him with his and um, just, you know, we have to always plan our deliveries and that kind of thing just around trying to not be involved in those peak times because it's a gridlock. Yes, I've just been at a conference yesterday about immigration so I found that um, a super interesting issue, it's the industry that I work in so I see that as a big issue, something that we're not dealing with properly. Um, well the narrative tends to be that immigration migrants are a net negative um, and I think there's a lot that they bring to our economies. Dying on that cross for you, for you. There is an arrangement for you. Dying on that cross I lived here 30 years ago and I've come back and it's completely changed and it's sad to see but... What was it like those, all those years ago? Well things were, were thriving so things were like houses were being built, people were working, employment wise and I was young and I loved it and I've come here and I just think, just looking around and I'm like what's happened? You know, what's happened? Why has everything declined? We've got three children and our old house was $600 a week. Um, it's just not affordable at all. The young ones, even though they're disaffected, like you were saying, some of them, um, I think the message needs to be got to them that because of that, everything that you do is political. PI and um, Māori, Māori kids get raised up in a real like abusive household, um, uh, like drug abuse, um, sexual, sexual abuse and everything. There are many issues here in South Auckland, but the with all the issues here in Auckland, they all relate back to alcohol. And if you look at the amount of shops that we have here in South Auckland, like St George Street, there's about five liquor stores right there. Uh, I think uh, alcohol abuse. Uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of older people, they're drinking around and leaving their, their rubbish everywhere. And young people that see them, they'll just get encouraged by it and they'll grow up and be like them. Parnell and Ortara, two very different places. I think in Parnell, there was a complete range of opinions. People were concerned about the environment, transport, education. But here in Otara, domestic violence, alcohol abuse, the same things kept coming up. We're going to go do something completely different now. We're going to go door knocking with Simeon Brown. He's 25. He's the National Party's youngest candidate. He's in Pakuranga. And we've got to see what he has to say. Watch him get bit by a dog, eh? <laughs> Oh look, I grew up in Rotorua, I'm 26 years of age, so I'm the youngest... Um, oh, sorry, I thought you were 25. You 26, yeah, 26, I've had no. a birthday since that article was written. <laughs> so nice to meet you, I'm, yeah. I'm Simeon Brown, I'm the local national candidate, it's good to come by your door. <laughs> and um, just sort of coming by and asking sort of what, what are the key issues for you in this year's election, how do you feel the government's going? Oh, they're, they're okay, Yeah, they're okay. Because it's important young people do engage and take the time to um, to, and it's for us, our job, to listen and, uh, and get involved and make sure that their voice is heard. And so I, I, I take it very seriously in whatever way I can to do that. She's packing it in. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this is going to absolutely cut down. Yep, yep, this is the storm we were this expecting. Is it. Yeah. Right. 
might call it a day then. No, no, that's Simi, all right. Pleasure. Hey, thanks Thank so much, you. Max. Thank you for and, us, uh, sorry we couldn't knock on more doors. Yeah, but do you, you want to come down and get in my car? We headed next to the National Party's 3M's campaign launch. The 3M's being the electorates Mangarei, Manurewa and Manukau East. We wanted to ask the local candidates there the same things we asked Simeon. Can the National Party speak for younger voters? Look, one of the things that all New Zealanders want is to get ahead, right? And National has created 10,000 new jobs every month. Um, and so that's, you know, more young people getting into jobs. They should be able to get good jobs. And that's what the government has been doing. We want to ensure that the youngsters who are leaving from the school or university, they should have proper talent or uh, uh, education so that they can get a good job. And let's just think about the messaging that we're giving our children. Katrina rightly pointed out all the extra classrooms going in uh, round here in Browns Road. Lots of classrooms going in my electorate. Not only that, but actually entire schools being rebuilt. The next day, crowds clogged Queen Street, hoping to watch the Labour Party's election campaign launch at the Town Hall. With the gap between Labour and National narrowing in the polls, it would be Jacinda Ardern's big coming out party, three weeks after replacing Andrew Little as leader. How do you can ask why you think young people should vote Labour? Well, because there's a real opportunity to change the government, I think. And after nine years, you're seeing that National may be good accountants, but I don't think they really make a good government in terms of improving social indicators like housing, homelessness, healthcare, that kind of thing. I am really excited um, about you know the possibility of changing the government. I've supported Labour for a while but um, I think yeah um, Jacinda certainly made their chances of winning more you know viable and hence the hence the crowd. Everybody let's do this everybody let's do this and win suicide rate is the highest in the OECD. While there is a lot of talk about targets, I know I will never be satisfied so long as there is even one life lost. It would be unfair to compare National's three electorate campaign launch yesterday with Labour's certified rock show today. But it would be fair to say this was a far bigger and more positive party than David Cunliffe and Labour's campaign launched three years ago. Would he or Andrew Little have been able to create such a buzz as this? Let's go from here today and run the campaign of our lives.